Bapu's assassination, there were three attempts. Mm. There was no security increased. And Bapu was saying dissolve Congress because it was formed for independence. Now independence is dissolve Congress. I have a feeling they wanted him to right. die. If he was a mafi veer, why did they keep him in captivity for 27 years, which they did yep. no one? Hey man, I wish somebody had helped me from the right wing. I sold my house to make the movie. I wish they had. So when I came out of the movie, I called my mom and I said, Mom, you're going to be a little disappointed. Mr. Savarkar's life was tough. Making a movie on him was tough. Releasing <laughs> it was tough. They came back. It yeah. made Hindu people feel guilty and ashamed of themselves. The yeah. British were the biggest patriots. And we come right. to Savarkar's face and he says, Hinsa to kitni hinsa. Hamari yeah. hinsa ka maksad swatantata tha. Sarv nash nahi. Very pleased to be here today with uh, Randeep Huda. Randeep, it's a great pleasure for me. So welcome to the show for the very first time. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I was looking forward to it. I appreciate it. Well, that's, that's very good to hear. First and foremost, uh, you know, congratulations on the performance of the movie. It seems to be really connecting with the people and... And I'm happy it's doing well. I was I was talking to my mom, and uh, if if you if you permit me to tell you a short story. Mm. Uh, so my mom, I come from a tall family. My mom's tall, my dad's tall. I'm a little tall, and so my uh, my parents always, when I was a child, they used to watch movies, and they were like, "Yeah, filmo mein na lambe chode hero achhe lagte hain." Uh. They used to always say that. Uh. And so my mom used to watch your movies and you're like, Randeep Huda acha lagta hai because lamba chauda ladka lagta hai. <laughs> thank you. Please thank <laughs> and, her from uh, my side. I, I will. And uh, I, I, I saw the movie, uh, Savarkar, the Savarkar movie. I saw it a few days before my mom. So when I came out of the movie, I called my mom and I said, Mom, you're going to be a little disappointed because you're going into the movie, uh, you know, going to see Randeep. But you're not going to see Randeep, you're going to see Savarkar. <laughs> so... I, I personally, when I watched the movie, I couldn't find you at all. I, all I saw was Veer Savarkar. So, you know, kudos on the, on the movie, on the role. I, I, I did really thoroughly enjoy the movie. Thank you, brother. It was a, it's a very contentious subject to make a movie on. And uh, right mm. from the point where we started the movie to even releasing it and to get an opposition to Mr. Savarkar's name in a movie, has been really immense. I mean, right from the trailer coming out, people already trying to cut him down to size, yeah. to what they feel he should be. And, right. you know, coming up with facts, people, great, great grandchildren of some of freedom fighters <laughs> uh, claiming their right. thing on their, on their ancestors as if they own them, they belong to the country. So all these things, right. people were just nitpicking out of it as if it was just a propaganda movie. And yeah. that's what not what it is. I really try to capture the essence of the man. I try try to not whitewash him, and I try to uh, I try to uh, get to the person he was, not just the events. And for that, I had to create um, the circumstances that made him into who he was. Um, and it's been a tough journey. And Mr. Savarkar's life was tough. Making a movie on him was tough. Releasing <laughs> it was tough. And fighting the naysayers to just, you know, brand it into some, you know, wishy-washy propaganda movie has been tough. But people yeah. are seeing through the craft. People are seeing through the story. And slowly and steadily, it's, it's the word of mouth is reaching people. And it's, it's, it's Mr. Savarkar is finally getting his due. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, even in my mom's circle, uh, the people that some of her friends that have watched the movie didn't know that much about Veer Savarkar. And, you know, they came out of the movie theater saying, Acha, ye sab to humko pata hi nahi tha. Itni kahani jo humko dikhne ko mili film mein, ye to humko pata hi nahi thi. We just know ki humko media mein kabhi kabhi kuch kya kahani hai sunne ko milti thi. Mujhe bhi nahi pata tha, dost. Right. Mujhe bhi nahi pata tha. Mere paas jab ye subject aaya, to pehle to mein biopic I was not ready uh, to do another biopic. I had just done Inspector Vinash for Geo, a series. Yeah. And playing real people can be taxing. So yeah. when they came with this movie, I said, but why did you think of me? I don't even look like him. I mean, there has to be some resemblance. And then uh, I said, okay. But then being a history buff, I said, okay, let me read up about the armed revolution and all that, there's nothing in the regular books uh, printed by a certain dispensation or, or leaning kind of people. For them, right. it was non-violence alone, which got us our independence. And uh, there'll be a mention of about a paragraph about 
you know, uh, uh, the armed revolution, these, these people were there, but they did nothing and nothing came out of it. I, then I thought, why then so many people were hung and sent to Kalapani and blown out of in, in, with cannons? What yeah. was it that they were not doing that was scaring the British so much? So that piqued <laughs> my interest. And then when I talked to some uh, friends in the industry, well-wishers, they said, I'm going to take this up, it's going to be a long haul, so I'm not going to be doing your movie you know, which I'd already signed up. I let go of some four or five movies I'd already signed oh. up. So they all said, don't get into it. He says, they'll be branded as, you're an artist, mm. and you'll be branded as a belonging to a certain party or belonging to a certain ideology. And mm. that kind of irked me more, having read about him and people not knowing about him. And still people telling you, don't make a movie on him. I said, why? I felt like a jart boy, I said. <laughs> 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 They came back. <laughs> so, uh, I went to I went to Delhi University. I was in Hindu college. I studied there, and a uh, lot of Jat friends I had there. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, so my strong people. Dekhi jayegi. And then uh. my question to them was very simple. I said, okay, what if I was approached for a movie to play Mr. Nehru? Would that be okay? He said, yeah, yeah. Mm. I said, then I have to make it. <laughs> why, why, why? I, wa I was really, I was always had this question in my mind. A billion people, I mean, we were not so, so our numbers were not so big back then because of, yeah. our fatality rate uh, was very high. Uh, but so many people and only one political party called Indian National Congress, which is not to be uh, confused with the Congress today. Congress today is the 72nd part of Congress that they've broken right. it into. Uh, so uh, these four or five people got us our freedom. Mm. And everybody else is uh, reduced to a line or two or a paragraph or something. And there is very uh, detailed videography, photography and mm. written material on Mr. Gandhi and Mr. Nehru as if somebody was following them around with a camera like people do on Instagram <laughs> these days. And I was quite uh, uh, surprised by that. And I, I, had to do, I had to read both sides. I read Mr. Gandhi as well. Mm. I had to read Mr. Gandhi and in comparison to Mr. Gandhi, and that's how I portrayed it in the movie, I've shown a very drastic comparison and a lot of people laugh at it. And I myself right. was uh, laughing at it because, you know, uh, 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 armed revolution succeeded all across the world. We were branded as non-violent people. Right. Napunsak, people who could not lift a sword or a gun to fight yeah. the oppressors and we are just and that's the image that happened when i did extraction i was get i was up for two i was gonna i was gonna talk about that movie I'm, I'm sorry i cut across you but i was going to talk about that movie because i enjoyed you in extraction because it was such a welcome change from an indian guy playing like an it professional yeah so that's that's movie. why i i i was up yeah. for two roles in that movie and uh but I chose this one. This was not so well written. It was a lot of action, which you can't really read in a script, uh, mm. with just a couple of points about his family. And I said, okay, I, nobody's done this, right? Yeah. I, I want to do this. I want to do this. Taxi driver, 7-Eleven clerk, a exactly. techie, a, a, <laughs> dorky, a dorky doctor. <laughs> I mean, we have, an, we have an image across the world, and it is because of our image of nonviolence, because yeah. of Papa Jerry, thank you very much, sir. Welcome, come again, sir. <laughs> what, the, what, what is going on? So yeah. I was already in that frame of mind and then I got Mr. Savarkar. And when yeah. I discovered these secret societies, because he was very inspired by Thomas Frost's secret societies of Europe and mm. from Mazzini. So all these secret societies had come up and it was such a, you know, such a exciting time where guns were being smuggled across seas and the Bolsheviks, Mr. Lenin was contacted and Mr. Lenin visited India House uh, two, three times right. to talk to these people. Um, and uh, he gave them bomb manuals in Paris with Senapati Bapat got. And all these things were going on and, and uh, they were preparing. In Europe, there were secret societies. And then uh, Lala Hardeyal went to America to get into, made Gadar party, which almost right. rescued Mr. Savarkar from Kalapani, but for the yeah. good old King's Navy. You know, uh, the German uh, submarines were, were, were shot down. 
Um, so all these things were going on and all we know is that there is a man in a, with a stick in a dhoti who did galvanize us all. I mean, he was very, yeah. very good at his perception management, Mr. Gandhi. I'll have to give him that. And he was a great, great, uh, um, he was a great, uh, uh, um, you know, I don't know how to put it nicely. Uh, he was a great um, diplomat in that sense. Right. Because he would be a PR firm's dream. Yes, yes, he would yeah. be. Because uh, in 1885, after Vasudev Pharke took up arms and he started killing the British, there was again, after 1857, the whole country was disarmed. And there was again mm. a thing of, hey, let's, 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 uh, we could kill these. We could, there's a handful of them. We could kill them. Mm. We could scare them out of this place. And in 1885, soon after Mr. Pharke was uh, arrested and sent to Yemen, they didn't hang him for three years. Mm. And they quietly hung him so that he doesn't become mm. a hero. Then, in 1885, A.O. Hume formed this liaison body between the British educated <laughs> Indians and the colonizers and called right. it the Indian National Congress, which then for many years was just uh, making prastavs and all that, uh, get us entry into the gymkhanas, uh, get us more <laughs> civilian civil services jobs and stuff like that. I mean, it was not complete freedom. It was just negotiating a certain middle path, which was the Naramdal, the, 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 there was the hardliners and there was the moderates. Right. So, well, think about that also, Randeep, that, you know, you had these people that were saying, ki humko puri azadi chahiye, kaise bhi chahiye, ladke bhi leni hogi to lenge, hamare ko desh ko azad karana hai, which is a very understandable statement, which is, which is what every Indian wanted. And these people were called extremists. This is how our history was taught to us, ki in logon ko extremists bataya jata tha. Yeah, when I say in the movie that no Congress member was ever sent to Kalapani, it's true. Because they never mm. did anything of violent intent, of intent of complete freedom. They were just fighting elections amongst themselves and going through internal party politics. Uh, mm. And when Khudiram Bose, who made the bomb, given from a manual from Lenin, smuggled to India by Vinayak Damodar Savarkar, printed by his brother Baba Rao Savarkar, right. plus the first bomb in our in Indian, Indian struggle, our Indian struggle for freedom. Everybody called him a coward. Indian National, mm. called him a, Indian National Congress <clears throat> called him a coward. It was only Gandhiji did. It was only mm. Tilak Sahab who in his case he called him a brave. And for just that one article, he was sent to Mandalay in Burma yeah. for seven years. And when he was sent, they were looking for an excuse. When he was sent, mm. then the moderates took over. And then the mm. moderates from Gokhale Sahab, then he, he was, he, his, uh, you know, his uh, understudy was then Mr. Gandhi, who then totally took over the movement. Yeah. And he was a charismatic leader in, in all respects. He galvanized the country that with this, he was a suit wearing, very fancy man, but he changed his clothes right. many times and came down to just a dhoti and a lati. And everybody, right. the whole country was poor. So everybody uh, uh, felt that he represented them. That was, the, that was a genius on his part. And anybody yeah. who walked behind him, even if it was three miles behind him, became a part of a freedom struggle. And that was a great thing. He galvanized the, 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 the whole country, poor people of this country into one, which these people were fighting in secret societies because they could not be yeah. out there in the open. So all these things happened. And finally, the British won the F Second World War, but they were under debt, so, debt of millions. Yeah. And they could not keep up the civil services in India, they could not keep up the management of the country, they could not pay their, their employees, and uh, all the people uh, in the British Army were, we came back and they did not want to uh, live in British India, they started joining the Azad Hind Forge in, in numbers, yeah. and Azad Hind Forge was already a threat to them. And it is the 1946 Bombay Dock Mutiny, which nobody, I show it as omitted history in the movie, bro. Right. I put a caption, omitted history. Because right. that was the final nail in their coffin. 20,000 right. sailors, 72 ships, warships, pointed guns right. at the mainland. That's when Clement Attlee, he said this in his speech many times, said yeah. that we, they're an armed nation now, we cannot engage them in talks anymore. We cannot 
afford and they he, in the movie he himself say afford another armed revolution like 1857 yeah. not a sepoy mutiny yeah. he even said that gandhi and non violence had nothing to do with it but i respect bapu his mahatma of our country i i do show in comparison to savarkar yes i may have differences with him but otherwise he's his bapu you know i respect him a lot and he's a but, but i have a follow up question with regards to that only because you know you you said what clement atli said that what an impact subhash chandra bose the revolutionaries the indian national army and then how the british indian army got galvanized and you know they were on the verge of revolt that the british thought ki agar ye log shuru ho gaye to humko bhagne ki jagah nahi milegi to abhi nikal lete hain correct you know correct and after that you know when you when you come to hear that your world view on how we actually got the independence completely changes ki kaise humko azadi mili and then when you think about all these revolutionaries jinki some of them you mentioned you know the chapekar brothers uh, basudev phadke you have khudiram bos madanlal dhingra udham singh rajguru sukhdev bagha jatin so many people you know in me se kitne logon ke naam par randeep hamare yahan शहर हैं या सड़कें हैं या अस्पताल हैं या यूनिवर्सिटीज हैं यू नो बहुत सो मेनी ऑफ दीज पीपल लेट डाउन देर लाइफ जिनको उस तरह की रिकोगशन आज तक कभी मिली ही नहीं है डू यू फील लाइक उनको और मिलनी चाहिए बिल्कुल यार बिल्कुल मैं तो एक फोटोग्राफ देखता हूँ मेरे इंडिया हाउस की या कई बार सीन में मैं देखता था एज ए डायरेक्टर ऐसे यार इसके ऊपर बायोपिक बना सकते हैं इसके ऊपर बना सकते हैं इसके ऊपर बना सकते हैं इसके ऊपर बना सकते हैं it drove me nuts and it was unbelievable yeah. i used to sit there in exasperation as to how do i increase their roles mm. how do i increase their roles i have got a limited time in which i have to tell the story and but i did try i i i did tell the larger story of an armed revolution yeah. in which mr savarkar is part in it and then the whole politics with non violence and the congress and how india was divided so uh, in a sense they were godse and apte had start had made their uh, another party mr savarkar right. had resigned from the presidentship of uh, hindu mahasabha he, he was very ill right. he never really recovered from from kalapani's vigorous uh, yeah. imprisonment rigorous imprisonment so uh, there were three parties even in the quit india movement there was a whole negotiation going on in which they were deliberating oh it will be out of character of us to not support britain in the war gandhi ji was saying right. that i'll talk to uh, mr hitler and mr misolini and the emperor of japan to stop this madness i just need some time mr nehru was right. like we should help them this that and <clears throat> mr savarkar was like uh, make military service compulsory make uh, you know <laughs> officers out of our <laughs> thing put your weapons industry make it in weapons yeah. in india so he was very pragmatic and our forces were fighting from both ends azad hind hoj yeah. force was fighting and a whole how many people were martyred and were part of the world second world war was a part of the british army but these people said we will not cooperate are who gives a damn will cooperate or not <laughs> we are already fighting Yeah, and then they did the Quit India movement, in which all the Congress Party members got voluntarily arrested. Yeah, that gave the impression that was the biggest political genius stroke by Indian National Congress. The whole yes. country had the perception that they were the ones fighting for them, and these people are recruiting people for the army, British army. Right. And then post that, this whole politics that that happened. obviously every party lost elections in 1945 but when the partition happened and that too was not just because of the muslims i proved that in the movie the allied forces needed a military base because uh, mm. uh, uh, russia had come till afghanistan mm. and nehru ji was leaning towards indian national congress was leaning towards russia the rangoon was gone so they needed ba- mm. base at both points and winston churchill recognized this as a thing and he came back with thumping majority after mr atley right mm. he had already foreseen it that's why they sent radcliffe who never been to india because they'd already done it yeah. and they made this handsome royal viceroy of india mount batten who is the right. liberator of burma they sent him and that white washed the entire thing and when the partition happened which was under and all these people were appointed they were selected as our ministers and prime ministers and all that right it was a joke all these british educated brown sahibs took over from the white sahibs and then for 70 yeah. years the same brown sahib attitude continued looking down upon our own civilizational beauty the british the, yeah. the westerners are selling us pattals for dollars paper ke wo pattals they are selling yoga to us <laughs> they selling the benefits yeah. of turmeric to us yeah. you know saffron to us 
It's, yeah. it's a joke. It's because we did not capitalize on it. So when the partition happened, lakhs of Hindus came from the Pakistan and Bangladesh area into India. They had all seen the, the madness that happened. 20 million people were affected. And yeah. it was done under Indian National Congress. So they were all very upset with them. So, mm. Bapu's assassination, when it happened, it was very interesting. I couldn't show much of it in the movie, but there were three attempts. Mm. There was no security increased. Mm. And Bapu was saying, dissolve Congress. Mm. Because it was formed for independence. Now, independence get dissolve Congress. I have a feeling they wanted him to right. die. Wow. They wanted him to go. And then, when he was finally shot, which is another conspiracy, his wounds from a 0.38 bullet, but Godse had a, a 0.9. 9 mm. Oh. So that, that's another thing. I don't want to get into that. It's right. another movie in itself. So the first diktat that came after that was, do you, you cannot arrest Mr. Sa they want to destroy Hindu Mahasabha. First diktat yeah. that came was, you cannot arrest a man of Mr. Savarkar's stature without judicial proof. And then there are meeting that happened. And after that, it was said, you, even if there is no judicial proof, his history his ideology suggests he could have done it. Right. <laughs> and then when they arrested him, the whole headline across the world changed. The Mahatma killed by a Hindu. Hmm. It yeah. made Hindu people feel guilty and ashamed of themselves. Oh, Hindu yeah. Mahasabha was vilified. It divided our uh, cultural identity. And Congress, Indian National Congress, I should keep saying, Indian National Congress won almost unopposed in 1952. So since then, his vilification had started because the British feared him the same way the Indian National Congress feared him. He yeah. could influence people through his writing, through his meetings, through, through just, you know, reaching out to people. He had this, if he was in this era, he'd be, a, he'd be an influencer. There'll be memes I mean, about if you, you look at his influence, right? He has, he passed away in the 60s. Today, his ideology, his writings, and you know, his, his influence is stronger than ever before, 50 years after his death. The Indian, new Indian parliament was inaugurated yeah. on his birthday on 28th of yeah. May. And you had to give Sardranjali to his photo, otherwise you could not enter, bro. I mean, that's influence right there. That's living beyond your years, though he did not get this due uh, while he yeah. was alive. And I, and our movie is the same thing. It, it, it did not get its due immediately. People just shrugged it off as a propaganda film. And there were yeah. some very right-leaning films that have come out, but hey man, I wish somebody had helped me from the right wing. I sold my house <laughs> to make the movie. I wish they had. Yeah. But well, let, me ask you, let, let me ask you about that because you know, when this, I, I was, personally, I was surprised when this movie was even announced because I was like, yaar, ye itni contentious figure par ye film hai. Ye bani kaise, ye nikli kaise, ye, Hui kaise? And then I read that you're not just acting in it, you're going to be directing it, you've written the movie. Like what, what led you to being attached to this movie so closely that you're directing, writing and acting in it? When I got this movie as an actor, I had a contract in place that I'm going to start losing weight and you've got to start shooting on this particular date. And you've okay. got to get, so because it's very unhealthy. I was, I was 92 kilos, I went to 60. Oh and it was, God. it's insane. And then I stayed that, around 60, 65 for a year and a half. If you don't mind me asking, how tall are you? I'm six, because 60 but I slouch, is insane. I slouch to 5'10", but I'm six. <laughs> oh my God, so that 60 is insane. Yeah, that's like really, really low weight. So they, then they didn't have a, the script was about Mr. Gandhi. The beginning was Mr. Gandhi. The end was Mr. Gandhi. The middle was Mr. Achoo. Gandhi. And I was like, hey, did you see Mr. Gandhi? Did you see Gandhi by Richard Attenborough sponsored by the Congress government? Give millions of dollars to them. Did you see that movie? Was there any Savarkar in it? They said, no. no. Then why are you making it about Savarkar? I mean, Mr. Gandhi, if he mm. was not there in the movie. So there were some of these uh, thoughts with it, but they didn't have a comprehensive screenplay because the people involved did not do any research. And I, as an actor, had fucking chartered books and national <laughs> archives and everything. So I was ready for it. I said, give me three days with mm. your writer, which was already on the thing, Utkash Naitani, he was wonderful. And we sat 12 uh, hours every night from 5 to 5 in the morning and we made the screenplay wow. because we knew what it was. And then I treated the screenplay in a modern way for so that A, it's a film which could be 
at par with any international film uh, because Gandhi was and B, yeah. uh, uh, it could be f uh, easy to consume for young people, right? So I kind of ma uh, wrote it like that and then they were like, you know, the, the director was busy with many big boss and stuff like that. You know? So, mm. they, so then, uh, anyway, I don't want to get into all that, bro. But sure, anyway, sure. so I took all that and I then the... There was no other director at that time and they said, you, would you direct? I said, I took it. I took it upon myself that I'm not going to do a Thuka Chepi sake yeah. of making a right winger film and just hope that, you know, just a, a, a tweet from the Prime Minister is going to uh, make the yeah. movie a big hit. I said, no, if I'm involved, if my name is there as a director, the pro product has to be equal at par with me as an actor, as an artist. I'm an artist. Even the writing has to be at par. And I, for that, I gave my heart and soul to it. And I a lot of times felt that it was Mr. Savarkar guiding me in a lot of ways. Right. I think he's the director of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that happened and then, uh, then um, there were differences and sh the movie got shelved. Oh, really? For, for how long? For months on end. Oh, wow. For months on end. And I, in the meantime, after it was shelved, I had lost all my muscles. So I was sitting on a horse and I passed out. And I, I, oh I, 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 I came to with my, uh, with my leg uh, uh, below my knee when, at 90 degree angle. Huh. Oh. Damn. So I pushed it in, went to the emergency. All my ligaments were gone. It was most probably, but they saved it. They saved my leg. I right. still have to get an operation done from my ACL. But oh my God. the doctors at Kokila Ben, they really saved me from being, right. uh, having a limp forever in my life. So this happened. Then I said, okay. Then I got another producer friend on board, uh, a Jat fellow again. He says, Dekhi jagi bhai sab. Dekhi And only Jats could have come and made this movie. It's good, to have, it's good to have headstrong friends. Yeah, and then uh, that yeah. was also not enough. Then uh, I, because of the kind of uh, work I do and, um, you know, I'm very selective about the content that I do. Uh, I don't make tons of money, but I have a good life. I am not complaining. I've had a good life. So whatever little properties that I had uh, accumulated, I told my father, I said, look, because he, he's the guy who's done it. I mean, I would have blown all the money on slow horses and fast women, uh, <laughs> but he's been saving, me, saving it for me. Uh, so I asked him and he didn't flinch. He said, mm. you, 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 you're so tormented and... And, 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 you know, put into a corner with this movie. He said, we'll make it again. Just put it all on. For Mr. Savarkar, put it on. It's for the armed revolution. He didn't flinch. He went to the bank, finished. I had money to make the movie. So that's oh. how I finished it. Why did you connect to this material like that? Because you said, you know, that there was pressure on you from the industry. Your well-wishers were telling you, mat banao ye movie, mat banao. You'll get typecast and all of that. Because of the injustice. Because of mm. the long, wrong narratives. Because of mm. pulling down a man... And all these people not getting their due and nobody knowing the side mm. of, the, of the armed revolution. I did not tell Mr. Savarkar's story. I tell the story of the armed revolution. And that is the thought process that won us our independence in the end. When I realized mm. that, I said, damn, this ha I have to do some disruption. I, I, have to, I have to see any the purpose, the largest purpose to achieve for any artwork is to raise questions. Mm. And I think I have achieved that with this movie. There are yeah. kids watching this movie and going and reading up on these people and finding out what happened. The pe kids are, people are reading on the 1956 doc, Bombay Dock mm. Mutiny, which is nowhere. Yeah. It has been wiped out. Yeah. Even the cellular jail in Kalapani was being wiped out by the Nehruvian government. Right. There were seven wings. Two were taken down by the Japanese to make their bunkers when they uh, 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 conquered Andaman Nicobar Islands from the mm. British. And two were destroyed by the Nehru government, by Mr. Nehru's orders. It mm. is when the... You think, Randeep, that in any other country other than India, Balwant Phadke would be a national hero. Any other country. Yes. This is only Hindustan, where people don't know them. Yes, absolutely. And their name and 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 name. So, look, this is a victor writes the history, brother. Yeah. That's there. The Nazis, they say, oh, Nazis, this, uh, the, the fascists, the fascists, the fascists. 
millions of people were or died or died of famine in india because britain was taking all our food and everything for the war the bengal uh, uh, famine the south indian famine millions of people died yeah. and they put atomic bomb on sleeping children in hiroshima yeah. and nagasaki and they're still heroes <laughs> how is that a narrative mm. they always like america for example projects itself as the good guys we are the good guys yeah. so what are you doing in uh, vietnam bro yeah. Why are you there in Iraq? Why are you destroying Iraq? Look at what you've done to Iraq, yeah. to Palestine, yeah. to Libya, to we and they took two trillion dollars and twenty years to re replace Taliban with Taliban in Afghanistan. <laughs> Even the aliens only come to America. Yeah. There's a this narrative has to change, and I made this movie so people abroad can also watch it. Anybody mm. in the world, in any cinema, can watch this movie and see that we were not just, you know, courageless people. Ek gal pe thappad pade, dusra bhi aage kar do, bhai. Ye courage to mere samjh mein nahi aayi. And I, I can't tell you how happy it makes me to hear, like a, you know, like a mainstream personality like you talk about these things because, for me personally, my, I've always felt this way jab main india main abhi india ke bahar rehta hu and india ke bahar to ye narrative bahut strong hai ki indians to bechare kitne sharif log hain kitne pyare log hain hello sir ye sab hamari ahinsa ki den hai bro ahinsa ki den hai nobody knows the military history of india nobody knows ki hazar saal tak ye desh ladta hi aaya hai lad lad ke har cheez liya hai is desh ne 1000 saalon tak that is the tragedy and yes martin luther king nelson mandela everybody also you know mm -hmm. it was there was a uh, there was an order passed to, in 1927 or 37 i'm forgetting right now that mm. from now on mr gandhi will be referred to as mahatma i've got that letter by congress wow so yes he did, did give us i mean this are imaging across the world and even today when dignitaries come to india even our government our prime minister takes them to the sabarmati ashram and all that that's great mm. I, yeah. I, I, I don't want to, but in that process, don't think of us as, I'm very happy I did that role in extraction. I'm very happy. Same. I can't tell you how happy I was to see an Indian guy whooping ass in a Hollywood movie. It made me so happy. I was like, finally, not a doctor, not an IT guy, not working at a petrol station, finally. And nobody, I mean, everybody, they, even the media and the industry themselves glorify yeah. even bit bit part roles in, in movies of actors. And m there was a mum silence over mine. And I was like, really? Well, I, yeah. I'm not the one to sit there, hey, I deserve this and deserve that. Hey man, I'm gonna keep chugging along regardless of you. Dude, I feel like you and uh, two roles, there was yours in Extraction and then there was Irfan Khan's in Jurassic World, which I really thought broke the mold. You know, it, Irfan Khan had the role of like an eccentric billionaire. Which shows that yeah, instead of you know, th there's another side to Indians. Yeah, we are and also human also beings. Action-heavy role in extraction. I was like, this is the side that people don't get to see about India. You know, it is also because Mr. Savarkar also used to say that, yeah, you know, the we Hindus we worship the cow. We should worship Narsima. Yes. So that you know, एक झपट्टे में लोगों को पता चल जाए. तो पर ये change करने की पर I'm fighting an uphill battle ever since I got attached to this movie. Um, mm. And I'm still fighting an uphill battle. And uh, but whoever's gone to see the movie, first they love it as a cinematic experience because I've, yeah. my first movie as a director, I'm really worried about how what people think of my storytelling. And I've really <laughs> used some new techniques. I break the fourth wall a lot yeah. of times, uh, and then I intercut two completely different time zones and many many things like that and a lot of english in the movie as well yeah. um, because i did not want the british to go too kakata hai mai aata hu it made <laughs> it made them really caricatures and stupid Salah and in the movie ke niche rahega, none of that <laughs> yeah no in the movie bro i have a scene on top with barry on the top of the on the roof of the jail yeah, yeah, yeah. And, he, and he says the might of the british empire lies in patriots like me who will do yeah. anything for their king and country that was the statement I was making. Even in uh, even in the uh, India house when Acharya comes back with that girl and that whole scene happens yeah. that we should uh, and she, he, that British woman in the end slams him with a bag and says, "I'd never do that to my country, you piece of shit." Yeah. The yeah. British were the biggest patriots. 
They went yeah. across the world and for king and country did unimaginable things to other human beings. I'm sure they are also human. But mm. they came over it and they did what they had to do to establish the British Raj with the sun mm. never set. We, yeah. on the other hand, were not so. Yeah. Can I tell you one one quick thing about the movie that I really, really enjoyed? It's because, you know, there's a there's a narrative created around Veer Savarkar where there's like, oh, ye to mafi nama likhte the, mafi mangte the. Inho ne apni life mein kya jhela hai? Ye to angrezo ke chamche the and all of that. And there's a scene in the movie where Veer Savarkar is released from prison and he's sitting down to eat a meal with his family. And I remember it's, it's a very basic meal. Asa kuch, nothing fancy he's eating. It's a very basic meal. And as uh, his wife is serving him the meal, he starts crying. And that scene stuck with me then and it stuck with me right now because it just shows you the simple act of sitting down with his family and eating a very, very basic meal is something that completely emotionally destroyed him because of the level of torture that this man and his comrades suffered in Kalapani. And for people to then turn around and say, Ki, Ino ne apni life mein kya jhela hai, it boils my blood. You know, khun khalne lagta hai. Same thing. His thing of writing those petitions. And the, on the other hand, since we are on topic of incarceration, uh, when the Quit India movement happened, uh, Gandhiji was put in Aga Khan prison. And he used to he get, access five, to everything. He used to get 500 rupees a month. And his guards used to get 100 rupees a month. Because yeah. every time anybody was stationed in a way, stith kar de, kar de unko, to unko bhatta diya jata tha, allowance, which they call pension. Mm. The naysayers call it. It should be an allowance. Anybody mm. who, who is not able to earn their living as a political prisoner is put under, put under uh, uh, um, you know, captivity. So they used to get this. And coming to the mafi nama, he says, Sam Dam Dandabed. Can you imagine a 27 yeah. year old boy, be a boy in today's age, is sent, he was supposed to release, be released in 1960. Yeah. He's sent to jail in Kalapani in a 7 by 11 cell. What do you expect from him to just lie down there? And, and especially yeah. a man who's so well read and so influential, who has got so much to give to the country. He wanted to use Sam Dam Dandabed to get out. Yeah. And that's what he, and he was a lawyer. So these were bail petitions, which are a part of any judicial process, uh, whether you in a court or if you're incarcerated. And he was a lawyer himself. He wrote for many, many people, not just himself. And he used to put this line in the end. If leaving me is getting in the way of your generosity and a gesture yeah. of goodwill, then I may be exempted from it. Right? And then I have a question for all these people who call him Mafi. Mm. If he was a Mafi Veer, why did they keep him in captivity for 27 years, which they did yep. no one? That yep. one thing, I don't even want to explain why he did it. Why was he under captivity for 27 years? That is my answer to all these Mafi Veer people. And then people compare it to him to Bhagat Singh. Bhagat Singh in his jail diary had poems of Savarkar that he had, yeah. he had learnt and he was writing in his jail diary. He published his book in, in English. He translated it in Gurmukhi. You could yeah. not get into HSRA if you if you not read the book. So <laughs> people say that Bhagat Singh did not file a mercy petition, or that's what they say, mercy petition, or a bail petition to be let go. And Mr. Savarkar did. Yeah. He was no, he knew he was going to go to the gallows. He wasn't given two lifetimes to yeah. settle in an island with mosquitoes and terrible weather and no sanitation and terrible food and make work like animals. And I want people to watch the movie because the way it is shown also in the movie, it really hits you hard because, you know, aap mafi veer, mafi veer sunte ho, then you go and watch the movie and then you go how, see how he lived in Kalapani. The way that Barry guy treated every single Indian revolutionary, especially Savarkar. Like it, it changes your whole perspective on this whole mafi veer nonsense. Yeah, because people don't imagine what, aray, Kalapani, aray, photo dekhe. Mainne bhi kamre mein baitke likhi thi, yaar. Kalapani ki photo dekhi thi, yahan scene lagao. Yeah. Wahan jate, meri phat gai. Hey, ka, kya karu? <laughs> Kahan camera lagao, kya karu? I couldn't yeah. stay in that cell for five minutes. It was just terrible. That's when I sat down there again and I said, okay, I gotta rewrite it. I gotta rewrite it. And this prison was yeah. made for, 18, uh, for 1857 mutineers by prisoners for themselves. Yeah. 
it is one of the most peculiar you could make a movie just on that when i reached there for the just recce i said hey i made a mistake while writing the movie i said i should have been just about kalapani today when people watch the movie when people hear about this film what would you like people to take away from this movie when they go home i have raised a question whether two questions i've raised i have raised a question whether we got our freedom only through non violence as we've been taught and whether mr savarkar was veer or not i don't call him veer in the movie mm. right so these are the two questions i'm raising and i hope it uh, as a as a filmmaker these are my questions and i hope people go home and have a think about it don't just forget it as a some entertainment you've watched go home mm. think about it and i hope some people will read about these other revolutionary not just mr savarkar and see what a vast rich history of our freedom struggle is and it's not just dhoti and whites and that topi yeah can i ask you something because so i i saw initial when i saw your movie sarabjit and i saw the sort of transformation you've done for sarabjit then i saw veer savarkar and i saw the transformation you've done for that movie what is that process like because you know <laughs> I'm trying to prepare for like a tournament, like a jiu-jitsu tournament, and I have to get into. I'm 125 kilos right now. I have to get down to 110, and मेरे से पांच किलो घटाने में ही मेरे से हो नहीं रहा. I don't know how you do that kind of a transformation. Brother, it's uh, basically willpower. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea how you go down to. My that my way. sister is an internal medicine doctor. Okay. Uh, and her specialty is nutrition. So whenever even I gain weight, like I had put on a belly for uh, Inspector Avinash because he was UP ka ST of khata pita to drink every night kind of a cop, and um, for that I you know she said ki acha chalo parante khao ye khao saturated fats and beer mm-hmm. and all, but she'll keep checking my cholesterol and stuff like that. Similarly, when I'm losing weight, you can actually lose weight and still keep on your muscle and strength. I use mm. the biggest tool that I used was intermittent fasting, which is जो हमारे उपवास रखते हैं या रोजा रखते हैं. It's the same thing, right? It is our scientific uh, discovery to the world, and uh, they are sending it back to us like many things as <laughs> in, intermittent, intermittent fasting. fasting yeah. right so that is a big yeah. tool brother and i'm telling you you will have more energy when you eat less so you start mm. from 10 hours to 12 hours 14 16 if you're a sportsman i think 16 is enough once or twice a week okay. uh, plus it's managing your macros and uh, you know a lot of sportsmen ag- ignore a certain uh, method of losing stored fat which is a slow burn mm. which is very important because when you do very high uh, heart rate running and stuff like that your body absorbs the energy from what you've just eaten or your muscles not from your fat mm. so you have to do a slow burn which is 220 minus your age into 65% which is uh, what your heart rate should be and that usually can be achieved by walking and walking also oh, is a wow. very very beneficial thing for for your mental state and your mm. well being because your body does not know or your my your your body it's walking so it mm. automatically acquires a sense of purpose so your mental well being also changes with walking walking is very uh, uh, underrated especially for sportsmen are i do the running yeah you can do the running but if you have to lose weight and stuff like that so i would mm. suggest brother and you do your intermittent fasting and work mm. out before you break your fast work out on your empty stomach okay before ah so don't work out like you'll have more energy if you Achha. do if you do like an hour of something you'll be doing 2 hours of it because your digestive mm. system also takes a lot of energy when you eat a lot especially when you eat meat and all that uh, for mm. your um, for your strength and muscles so mm. i would suggest you go we start with fasting start with 12 hours then 14 and work out right. before wake work out at the end of your fasting don't eat and then work out eat work out at the end of your fasting you'll have more energy and your weight will also go down i'm That's sure uh randeep if you'll allow me 10 more minutes i just want to do a quick segment with you that i do with all of my guests so it's just a rapid fire round that i do with all of my guests it takes 10 minutes stops so, so rapid fire for 10 minutes how many questions 1000 <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I give it 10 minutes because sometimes people like to take their own time in answering the questions. So Rapid like fire, bro. As, as quickly or as much time as you want to take, it's, it's all up to the guests. So question number one is, if Savarkar was alive today, what do you think he will feel most happy about? That we are a very armed nation with modern weapons and we are making our own weapons in our country. We are today a weapon making infrastructure and we have an atom bomb. What should the youth of India today that are in college, young, young professionals, what should they be learning from Veer Savarkar? They should be learning that country is above religion. You have to learn, read, write and make yourself physically strong, mentally bold and step out with all your glory. I agree. I, I think every, you know, every young person should learn. Uh, I, I learned this later in life, but I feel like every young person should learn how to some kind of a martial art, learn how to fight because it gives you a certain level of self-confidence that I feel like you might not get otherwise. In his Mitra Mela, when he was a, when he was a very young boy, he formed this a secret organization called Mitra Mela, yeah. in which you had you could only enter if you had a weapon. You have to bring a <laughs> weapon on the first day, and then they'll teach you how to fight with sticks and make you swim and do done better. Yeah. And all those things. Plus, they used to discuss literature. They used to discuss stories and tell each other's stories. So you have to have both physical capability yeah. and you have to be learned enough to when to use it. Agreed. Um, for you, what gives you the most amount of hope for India today? Our, um, our youth. We've got the yeah. largest young population in the world which is connected to each other and to the world through the latest technologies. And, um, and there's immense knowledge out there that they can tap into. Our youth, the, the number of our youth, if harnessed well is going to, what's going to make us great because the whole world around all around the world is an aging population but not here right. right when you were starting to get into acting who was your acting inspiration uh i had uh, robert de niro's uh, pacino's nasiruddin shah saab uh, yeah. daniel day lewis and all these people as my um, when i got into acting but when I had yeah. not gotten into acting, I used to like Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, oh. yeah, Chuck Nor, uh, Bruce Lee, um, yeah. Charles Bronson. <laughs> oh, Charles Bronson. Yeah, I was a big Charles Bronson fan. a deep fan. cut, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Charles Bronson's cool. He's very cool. Um, when you were getting into direction, did you have an inspiration there when you were starting to get into direction? Oh, my inspiration, uh, uh, I always... Uh, I'm a big Clint Eastwood fan as a, as a director. Uh, David yeah. Lean, Sergio Leone. I I a uh, big fan of theirs. In my movie also, there are extreme close-ups and there's wide shots. Yeah. I've done some of their. Uh, I have uh, imbibed some of their things. And also all the directors that I have worked with, especially in the interpersonal relationship on the set. Some days I was yeah. Mira Naya, some days I was Amin Tiaz Ali, some days I was. Praval Rahman, somebody, all these other directors, Neeraj and all that, and Afzal. So all these directors, till I found my own groove, I am more non, no, more no nonsense than any other director I've ever worked with. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. I can tell you would be too. Um, what is what's a what's a movie directed by one of your favorite director groups that you can watch at any point? Kabhi bhi TV par ho, you can watch it. Oh, um, Raging Bull. Dude, Raging Bull is such a like a like such a heavy movie though. Can you watch it regularly? Yeah, I can watch it. I love yeah. Martin Scorsese. In fact, one of those long yeah. shots that I, when I follow the waiter is inspired by uh, Martin Scorsese's movies. Um, yeah. I could always watch Lawrence of Arabia. Uh, oh, wow. I could always watch... Uh, you know, Bridges of Madison <coughs> County. Uh, I could always yeah. watch uh, Unforgiven, uh, Million Dollar Baby, anywhere you pick it up, yeah. Do you have a guilty pleasure movie or TV show that you are slightly embarrassed to admit that you really like? I don't know, I'm not embarrassed about much I like. I'll, okay. I, I watch Seinfeld on repeat. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can be what? Shit's Creek. 
<laughs> oh really that's a good show though that's a good yeah. show though. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but i i i i find it tough to sleep without the tv on or without a sleeping yeah. pill for the last two years so these are yeah. my like light things which i can just you know and i watch episodes that i've already seen before so that i don't have to put my mind into it right um what is a movie or a tv show or any piece of media that everybody loves, but you don't like as much. I can't think of any. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I like Game of Thrones. I like The Crown. I love The Crown. In fact, uh, I didn't like some uh, Indian shows. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I didn't couldn't really get the hang of Mirzapur. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a huge show. Very popular. My parents watched it. My parents love it. I couldn't yeah. get a hang of it. Mm. What is the name of the movie that will be made about your life? Hard hitting questions, questions only. only. <laughs> <laughs> you stumped me there. Uh, uh, Rebel? I don't know. Yeah, it's a good name. I like that name. You've played Savarkar now. You've played Sarabjit, some real life people. You've played uh, Inspector Avinash. Charles Sobraj. Charles Sobraj, that's right. Raja Ravi Varma. Uh, going forward, if there was, if I were to tell you any, ca any historical character from history that you would love to play before your career is done. I don't know, man. These things hit you on a Tuesday afternoon. I never plan <laughs> to, you know, I never plan to do these uh, real life roles at all. And I was quite mm. surprised when they come to me. Uh, anything mm. that comes to me, my first reaction is no, 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 because I only see endless commitment and I want to <laughs> I want to go ride my horses and do my wildlife photography too um, but uh, there are many I mean Madan Lal Dhingra for example mm. uh, I would love to play that um, Banda Singh Bahadur that's a very yeah, that's a great point very uh, conflicting character but um, but that I'll have to direct <laughs> yeah. yeah it's so funny that you that you Tell me that you say no to projects when they come to you initially because of the commitment. Because when I see the movies, I see 150% commitment. So it is funny to me that when, when you tell me the story that, oh, projects are there and I feel like, why do you do such a commitment? And then you see the movie and then you see the no, commitment. Then I, then, I, then, I, story. then I fall completely in love with it. And it, yeah. it, it becomes, it overtakes me, it becomes an obsession. And, and the only way to get rid of that obsession is to find another one. <laughs> That's fair. I love movies, so I ask all of my guests this. What is your favorite genre of music and your current favorite song? Jazz. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, my current favorite song is uh, Stardust by Django Reinhardt. Oh, I've never heard that. I'm going to add that to my Spotify. Stardust by Django Reinhardt. Stardust by Django Reinhardt? Uh, D-J-A-N-G-O, Django Reinhardt. There you go. This is why I ask, because I get new music out of it. Blockbuster movies or critically acclaimed movies? I would like to have a combination of both. A good answer. It was a trick question. Yeah, that's nice. A, um, a big box right. office enables you to do more movies um, like... Uh, in the movie industry, money matters a yeah. lot. So finding money for movies, uh, a movie which you can make sensibly, which can be critically yeah. acclaimed, and does well at box office is just a dream of any uh, person involved in movies in any capacity. Your favorite Haryanvi saying? Dekhi <laughs> jai. I like that one. That's a good one. I, I'm assuming that while you were preparing for this role, you learned a little bit of Marathi as well. I'm sure you picked up a little bit of Marathi along the way. Uh, I did. I even had a coach, a young girl who used to come to my house. And yeah. even my wife and me, we both used to take classes. But I found it oh. a very complicated language, a very rich language. And I love the way it sounds. Tomorrow my movie is releasing in a Marathi dub. And I'm really oh, looking wow. forward. I can understand Marathi quite well. Uh. Uh, but because I had so much to do in this film as a director, actor, and, you know, for me to concentrate on the language as well was just beyond any human capacity. And sure. also, I, there were Marathi actors in the movie who, when I spoke with them, I sounded like a mug. 
So <laughs> Mr. Savarkar cannot sound less Marathi than anybody else. <laughs> and plus, uh, his biggest uh, roadblocks in his him getting across to people was that he wrote extensively in Marathi, though he knew Urdu, he knew Gurmukhi, he knew Hindi, everything. Mm. He wrote mm. extensively in Marathi and most of the things written about him and him himself writing was in Marathi. So I wanted to break that barrier of language and get it to a larger Indian audience. Perfect. What's your go-to dish to eat? Dish or anything. I anything. like chocolate ice cream. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I only eat chocolate ice cream. I don't like any other Yeah, foods. me neither. The more yeah. chocolatier it is, the better. Yeah, exactly. My wife doesn't get it. She tries all kinds of different stuff and she's like, why are you always eating chocolate? I'm like, yeah, because, because, I'm, it's because I'm going gonna, gonna to eat what you're suggesting that I should eat and then eat an ice cream, yeah, exactly. chocolate ice cream after yeah. that. So that I'll have to eat. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Chocolate, chocolate ice cream is the pinnacle. pinnacle. You, can't you can't top, top it. it so might as well yeah. eat the best thing. Gandhi used to get yeah. goat milk uh, ice cream in <laughs> Aga Khan Palace when he was under arrest yeah, uh, exactly. in the Quit India movement. <laughs> I, I was astounded by that. for you, Randeep. What would you like Randeep Huda's legacy to be? Of an artist. And hopefully somebody who has raised questions uh, in people's minds and um, to be not, to not age badly. <laughs> My artwork, I'm saying. That's a good one. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's a good one. It's a good lot one. of old movies well, that we liked, I watch them now, they don't, they've not aged well. Right. I would like my work to age well, I think. And I think, I think this movie will, personally, this is my personal opinion. I think the way this movie has been made, you know, you could have gone a bunch of different directions with this movie. Um, you, you could have just said, you know, this is, this is what I believe. And so I'm going to show this point of view in the entire movie. What you've done is you've shown the facts as they, as they have happened. And you've given it up to the audience. I, I had decided that I will make a movie with this point of view. I <laughs> have, nobody has been able to move a centimeter away from what I wanted in this movie. And mm. I, I felt that a lot of Indian biographies are, are quite shoddy, I feel. Uh, mm. The way we make our, make our biographies with, you know, indulgent, emotional... Um, mm. people I always keep feeling <laughs> and uh, to not indulge and not to give everything on the platter to the audience so keep it mm. things you know achha, achha, ye wata kya, wo wata kya. but um, I felt that any person uh, especially a conflicting uh, uh, you know opinion person or, or whatever that word is um, you, you have to tell the circumstances in yeah. which that, or, or the situation, the world situation at that point of time in the movie. So for the longest time, I give the old provincial names, British Raj in captions, in captions, because yeah. uh, we were not a country as such at that time. Uh, plus we were a colo colony of the Europeans, a European country, and the world was affected us. We were not in isolation right. from the world events, whether it was the Bolsheviks, who won an armed revolution by th yeah. throwing away out their imperial uh, power um, and because the public or, or they forced the public to, to side with them unlike ours which were, had another completely thought process of non-violence going on. So I really wanted to create the circumstances because circumstances, circumstances maketh the man. So yeah. you cannot be in isolation. So I did not want to just tell about him. I wanted to place him in, in events of significance. Yeah, and I think those are the kinds of movies that really stand the test of time, you know, where you're presenting the facts and you let people make their mind up. And I have a feeling and my hope is that this movie does the same thing. And, you know, kids 20 years from now will watch this movie and learn about this, this man that I, that I consider to be a great man. And, and a hell of a performance that you put in as well. So again, my congratulations to you and, and you know, nothing but the best for the future. And uh, I hope you continue to make projects like this, but I also hope you continue to make some projects where you're kicking ass like Extraction. Yeah, I, I actually want to make an action movie next as a, direct, that, as a director um, because I've got a bone to pick about the action movies they make here. And the way, also, can I, I know you have to go. I'm sorry I'm taking more time. Of yours, no worries. But just one more minute. 
the way that the action is also shot in that movie, I just love it. It's so gritty. It's so real. People get hit. People get shot, and it all feels real. And I, I and I wish I wanted to show I wanted Indian to cinema. cinema I wanted to show like that. that that though you might like uh, with the thought of violence uh, yeah. to win our freedom today, you might feel. Uh, but it it is gruesome job. Somebody, it's a gruesome, yeah. gruesome thing. Somebody loses a relative, father, brother, mother. Somebody loses somebody. So I wanted to put that yeah. in. That's why I put in that scene, which is totally unrelated to our history, yeah. which was the uh, uh, Nagas- Hiroshima Nagasaki atom bomb, which mm-hmm. ended the Second World War. I put it there, and immediately after that, they say that you know. Subhash Chandra Bose in the died uh, died today he was this this years old and Mahatma Gandhi said he was a great patriot he died well he was a great patriot though misguided and we come right. to Savarkar's face and he says hinsa to kitni hinsa hamari yeah. hinsa ka maqsad swatantrata tha sarvanash nahi so i yeah. though i made him and it is it is him coming out in me when i say that uh, no it is hinsa or violence in isolation is absolutely unacceptable right. but violence for self defense for self acclimation for your pride uh, uh, for injust against injustice is justified chukar aj hama heel te dar gujast halale ast burdan ba shamshir e dast ye guru gobind singh ji ne kaha tha that when Injustice is intolerable. It is your dharm to take mm-hmm. up the sword against it. But in isolation, I do not, uh, I do not encourage violence. And I have shown it in right. the movie that no, uh, violence is violence unless it has a larger, better purpose. Yeah, must have a meaning behind it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Randeep, for taking all this time. I know it, it's late there, and I really do appreciate you taking all this time to speak to me. Thank you, brother. Uh, all the very best with your movie, and I'll be following your future projects very closely as well because I enjoyed the hell out of this movie, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you for having yeah. me, and uh, all my love to your listeners and to your mom. Thank her for my side for her <laughs> appreciation. And in the next She'll movie, she'll be very happy. In next I'll movie, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll look hatta hatta. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much, guys. Please, if you have not watched it yet, please go watch the movie. It is fantastic. I recommend it. Uh, Randeep, thank you very much. Thanks, again. brother. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers.